Welcome to Frost Astrophotography. So I used my home observatory and my small refractor to look into the soul of the universe. That is IC 1848 Soul Nebula, that is. So the Sol Nebula IC1848 or Westerhout 5 is an emission nebula in the constellation Cassiopeia. Your normal emission nebula is a nebula constructed of ionized gases that transmit lights in different wavelengths. The most common source of this radiation is ultraviolet photons with high energy that is transmitted from a, a nearby star. Two very common types of uh, emission nebulas are hydrogen regions, that is a region where you have star formation, and massive young stars are sources of the ionized photons. And then you have the uh, planetary nebulas, and that is a dying star casting off its outer layers, exposing the hot core and ionize them. Only massive hot stars with a temperature over 25,000 Kelvin releases enough energy to ionize an emission nebula. The Sol Nebula, often mentioned together, with its partner, the Heart Nebula, as the Heart and Soul. Together, they cover an area of about 300 light years, and they are physically connected to each other by a bridge of hot gas and dust. Uh, the stars in these uh, regions are younger than a few million years old, and they are in the beginning of their lives. That can be compared to our own sun that has been around for 5 billion years. The Sol Nebula is located about 7500 light years from Earth.
the total number of exposures for this image is 119 with a total integration time of 10 hours. Those light frames consist of 23 sulfur 2 light frames, 43 hydrogen alpha light frames and 53 oxygen 3 light frames all of uh, 300 seconds or 5 minutes exposures. Let's jump into PixInsight to look at some uh, processing steps uh, like I normally do. I actually captured this data earlier uh, during spring of 2023 and I've been saving the uh, data for uh, this video. So I actually captured the data during, I think it was four or five different nights. And I combined all of the uh, calibrated light frames together and integrated them into three uh, master light frames. One for H alpha here, one for the O3 here, and one for the S2 here. And they have all been uh, drizzle integrated so i have a very nice resolution uh, for these images i chose a rather unusual composition i think it is standing right now and not lying down i can't really fit the whole of the soul nebula inside one frame I should have done a mosaic. Uh, that might be something to do later on. We have a pretty interesting area here where we have a star birth. And uh, I will uh, focus on that later on during processing. For those of you watching my videos, you can see that I've been using the uh, exact same workflow for the linear phase when it comes to SHO images anyway. And that is the dynamic crop, the dynamic background extraction, the blur exterminator and the noise exterminator. So I've run through that for these three frames and they are now ready to be uh, moved over to the non-linear phase of the processing. It's worth to mention here that on my wish list I have uh, better filters. I would love to have some chroma 3 nanometer filters for my telescope and camera because you can see here if you compare the stars here on the H alpha to the stars here on the O3 and this is even with the blur exterminator. You can see that we have some uh, big stars and some halos around the more powerful stars here that I really don't like that much. Uh, we also have some of that on the uh, Sulfur 2 light frame here, but not as big as the ones on the O3. In the non-linear phase, after a manual histogram transformation, I used uh, a range mask to mask off the nebulosity to adjust the background a little bit here on my S2, on O3 and on my H alpha. I'm fairly pleased with the uh, H alpha data here. There's a lot of data and it's pretty good even though with my fairly limited telescope. I am very pleased with the result here of these 43 light frames. So this is going to be good to work with moving forward here. So I did a normal combination of SH and O using pixel math. There are other options today now if you want to use them. There are a, a couple of scripts, a process. And there's also the Forex X palette if you want to use that. Uh, I really didn't uh, like the starting point of the Forex X palette on this one, so I went with the normal SHO. 
as you can see, uh, there's a lot of green uh, when you com combine the S, H and O at first. And I see a lot of people, you know, keeping a lot of the green. I usually remove about 80% of the green here, invert it and then remove 100% of the green to remove the magenta. But I guess that is a matter of personal taste. So if I remove uh, with the SCNR the green and magenta, uh, you end up with something like this to start off with. I then usually uh, make a couple of color masks uh, that can manipulate the orange red and the blue to make it more vibrant and pop out a bit. You can see there that there's a big difference between the two here. I then uh, run through a couple of sharpening processes. Uh, you might not see it here, but if you zoom in, there is a difference here in uh, how sharp the uh, object is. I run through uh, some denoising that is of the main structures here in the nebulosity. Especially this area is interesting because you want details to be sharp here. And I opted to go for something that is called the dark structure enhance on this one just to make the darker structures pop out a bit more so that is a i think it is a script no uh, yes it is a script not the process you can find it uh, under dark structure enhance under utilities and I used the default settings to run through the image here. When that was complete, I made some final adjustments on the colors again. And I also made some curve adjustments to uh, get some more brightness in the image here. I also made the blue a bit more bluer in this version here. So let me just remove everyone but the first here so this uh, on the right here is the first integration of sho uh, not manipulated and on the left here i have run through all of my non-linear processing steps to end up with the soul nebula like this here so when it comes to stars there are a couple of options you can use for xx stars you can use stars from one of the frames for example h alpha stars or you can use sho stars like i've done here so this uh, is the original sho stars when integrated and i've run through scnr uh, as i've done for the um, nebulosity so that uh, removes the uh, magenta in the image here and then I have reduced these stars a little bit. Uh, if we compare the two here, you can see that these stars are a bit reduced in the right image here compared to the left. And I really like that because I don't want these stars to overwhelm the object that you want to portray. And what I ended up with was a, an, an SHO image with SHO stars. And that is uh, 10 hours of the Soul Nebula. So what I ended up with here is 10 hours of the Soul Nebula SHO with SHO stars. And I really like the star birth area here. It would be nice to capture the whole soul nebula in a mosaic. I will uh, get that on my list for sure to be able to portray the uh, complete soul nebula and maybe the region of the heart and soul nebula together. And who knows, we might even get a glimpse of that gas and dust bridge that is supposed to connect the two together. 
So for now, enjoy the final image. Thank you so much for watching this video and as always if you like it please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel if you're not already doing so. If you want to support me and the work with these videos there is an option listed in the video description that you can use. Until the next video I wish you have clear skies.